Hey guys, this is Mr. V and this is Apes Topic 2.7 of the review videos. This is the last one of Unit 2 on Ecological Succession. So one of the things I want you to learn about Ecological Succession is that um, it's how a biological community changes over time. So this happens over long periods of time and we have two types that we want to look at. That's primary and secondary succession. Okay, Primary succession simply defined is basically where there was no life before and no soil or um, substrate for plants to grow. Okay, Secondary succession is the kind where there was already life before, something disrupted it, it went away, and there was already soil for things to regrow again. Um, that's a big distinction and it may get asked of you on a free response question. So some of the terms to know about this. Well, the first one is that you need to know what a pioneer species. Basically, that's the first species to move in to an unoccupied habitat, typically a plant because it won't be an animal. Animals need plants to survive on some level. Okay. Um, then you have the intermediate species who show up right after. Okay. They help colonize. They tend to be shrubs, things like that. Then you have the climax community where it's at the highest biodiversity in the area over a long period of time. Okay. And one of the ways we measure um, succession is by biomass, how much living matter is in the community. And we mentioned this in our previous PowerPoints, but uh, species richness and the net productivity. So whether or not there are many species is the species richness and the net productivity is going to be how much energy is available after re respiration in that ecosystem. Okay, so here's primary succession. The idea is that you have these pioneer species that start off with bare rock or sand and the first things that come in, those pioneer species are going to be lichens and small plants um, and annuals then you get the grasses, and then after that, the intermediate species, which are going to be shrubs and small trees. Then you finally get the climax community that's going to have the largest trees, the highest biodiversity, and the highest species richness. In secondary succession, the difference here is that there was not some sort of um, rock at the beginning, but there was already previous ecosystem. So maybe it was some other climax community that burned down, was hit by a hurricane, um, you know, a tornado of some sort. Or maybe it was just something that uh, man created and we ended up, you know, having a parking lot, breaking down the concrete, getting rid of it, and then just some soil there and how things eventually start to pop up on their own. So uh, how this works is the pioneer species tend to not be lichens. Uh, they tend to be small grasses and weeds and plants. Then those perennials show up. Then you have the shrubs and eventually the climax community starts to look a lot like uh, the previous climax community. The difference is the time period. So this will be after 200 or more years, whereas the uh, primary succession may take hundreds of thousands of years. Okay, so some other big key factors um, that play a role in succession are keystone species. These species that have a significant role in determining the community structure, right? So these are typically predators, right? Um, these are mutualists like bees and flowers. And what I like to call, or what are normally called, ecosystem engineers. Um, the example I like to use is woodpeckers. Okay, this is a golden-fronted woodpecker. Um, woodpeckers create a habitat where there was no habitat before. So that ends up being something that other species may use down the line because these woodpeckers tend to not keep their same habitat long term. Um, and that ends up creating new things. Um, another example of this would be beavers. Um, they end up creating dams and changing ecosystems. So um, that tends to be why they're keystone species. And then again, other factors are indicator species. So one of the ways we know whether or not an ecosystem is quote unquote healthy is by looking at what is there. So we can look at the macroinvertebrates, the plants, the algae, the fungi, and what I have here are the amphibians. Amphibians are really, really um, interesting because they end up having um, part of their life cycle in water. And so because of that, they're very um, they're very susceptible to water pollution and disturbances there so its presence or abundance can tell you whether or not an ecosystem is doing well and right now frogs globally are just not um, frogs amphibians toads of all kind they are just not doing well because of a certain fungus called chytrid fungus that is spreading amongst them as well as habitat loss and draining of wetlands so uh, the, right now, the indication is that some ecosystems are just not doing well because amphibians are disappearing at a much larger rate than most other vertebrate animals. So here are some resources you can look up. 
uh, to help you with some of these topics. So hopefully that was helpful and uh, we'll see you in the next video.